I was invited to a prisoner event with 100 other players. However, I had secret intel from the host that this was a fake prison. Instead, I was being thrown onto a map infested with zombies. Over the course of the next 8 IRL days, the zombies will mutate, being able to mine blocks and bulk up more than Bruce Banner and the Avengers. But like I said, I was the only one who knew. So I followed the motions, listening to every word. Prisoners of District 14, look underneath your feet and you will find your starting gear. The barrel that I was given had two very important elements, starter tools and diamonds. That's what I call a head start. But before I could even brag about my winnings, we heard the last from our captors. Prisoners, I wish you the best of luck and try not to get eaten. I woke up in a field. First things first, wood. I know what's out there and I don't want to be caught off guard. Then I headed into a clearing with a road, but most importantly a friend. Hello? Hello? Are you friendly? Yeah. The first player I met up with tagged along with me on my looting journey. This is war. World War Z to be exact, and I need gear to survive. We got to a suburb and met up with a few more people. They were all interested in looting this place, but my focus was on finding the city. After leaving my group, I stumbled into a rundown parking garage. Nothing seemed exciting till I found a working vehicle. The garage was connected to a hospital, where I kept getting medical journal after medical journal. I'm not a doctor, what do I look like? Until I found the mother load. A barrel with another diamond, four iron, and a pistol. Now I'm strapped up if someone comes for me. After leaving that place, I met up with some old friends, Tech Wizard, from a previous event who posed an interesting question. Would you like to join the Shadow Wizard money gang? <laughs> this, this man never disappoints. After speaking with them for a little bit, I remembered the car that I left in the garage. There's also a car in this parking garage, by the way. We went up to see another player had just hopped inside. Oh, hey, That's someone's in it. Hey, yo. yo what? Hey, What's get up, in, bro? Get in. Get in! Hey. Oh, Get in! Oh, nice. <laughs> we run these streets! With that, myself, Tech, and Abdul hopped in a vehicle with a stranger. Not exactly the smartest move. We started driving away until I realized this was no stranger at all. It was Protag, the guy who wrangled me into this event. Basically putting me up against an apocalypse and... Now I'm thinking I need new friends. We took our car out for a joyride, ended up making a posse of vehicles driving around just hanging in the middle of the end of days. Us core four in the truck did end up breaking formation when a man with an axe came for our heads. He's got an axe, go, yo, go, yo, go, yo, go, run, go, run, go, run, go, run. Now that we were on our own, it was time to get back to our looting venture. We stopped at a supermarket where I got three more diamonds, but zombies were overrunning the place, and this was just day one. The nighttime was proving to not be safe whatsoever. To keep us alive, we drove around the entire night. Not only just from the zombies, the people too, trying to find a safe place to bunker down at. In our search, we found pretty much nothing. Unless you count a military base with a killer clown inside, nothing. Once morning hit, the admins announced an airdrop only 600 blocks away from us. This may seem far, but in the truck, it won't take us more than a minute. Once we got on site, Tech Wizard and I went to scout and grab the loot. Inside, we found a bunch of random items, but most importantly, eight diamonds. I instructed Tech to take half, and I will take half, which is great because now I have ten. And once we reunited with the boys, we came up with our daytime plan. We need to find a spot that no one's at, bunker down, put this in a garage. So we began searching the map following roads while avoiding players, checking out the city, which is probably too infested for us anyway, and discovered an airbase with his settlement already going. We ended up getting in too close and a flock of players just flooded out to come see us. It's like they've never seen a vehicle before. And it was terrifying, okay? Thankfully, I knew the leader and there was no real danger. Back with the garage plan again. We found a nice stone hill and decided to build into it. Sure, we could have found an already made base, but the idea is to hide the vehicle best as possible on the server. While mining out the cave, a red man showed up. Fellow YouTuber, it Ryan. My mans took 40 minutes to find us, but we're happy to add him to the team. Did you leave? Did you leave them? Yeah, so essentially, they, they, crazy. They're, they're crazy? Cool. Your group? They're, they're literally know. crazy, yeah. With everyone safe and sound from the zombies and other prisoners, we went mining. Cool, I know. I got a few veins of diamonds and made the team an enchantment table. And I just want to say, I'm a humble man, okay? Diamonds are only in literal one veins on this server, okay? You cannot find anything but a one vein. So I'm sacrificing quite a lot here. We also discovered that Abdul still didn't know we were running with Protag. Wait, Protagonist is with us? What do you it's mean? The that's green, the pickle. That's green guy. You didn't piece it together, Abdul? <laughs> huh? <laughs>
Back in the base, I presented the enchantment table to the team. We all wanted to gear up as best as we could so we could scout other prisoners. We left the base all ironed up, looking like a squad of gangsters, and the first target was the prison next door. The bottom level of this place was infested with zombies, like way too many zombies, and so we just made our way up. On the way, I heard someone talking. I alerted the team to their position on the roof and began our hike to storm the castle. Once we got to the top, we break in and it is utter chaos. This man had a gun, I had a knife, and the cat was tweaking in the corner. Turns out we stumbled onto a singular guy. Probably just gave him a heart attack too. I'm formally apologizing, Gumrock. We should have reconsidered robbing him at this point, but uh, we have no chill. Back to scouting, we made our way to the city, where we spotted a lone man in clearly superior armor. Once again, it was another YouTuber named Box Deity. This man had a working radio on him, and we traded his life, slash the ability to join our team, for it. While that was happening, I spotted a few players on a nearby brick building. We took a vantage point on the parking garage and just watched. We don't stick out at all, do we? This amounted to us bur burglar bur burglaring bur burger their base. We climbed the vines at dusk to see what was up there. Not much to be honest, but I did collect some books for a future level 30 enchant table. On the way back to base, things took a turn. We found a player and, uh, well, he wasn't friendly at all. Drop, drop everything, drop everything, drop everything you or you He's die. Got He's got a grenade! He's got a grenade! Run! Kill him. Kill him! Kill him! He's dead. <laughs> no! Pick him up, pick him up. After he blew up our man and himself, evidently, we decided it was best to res him and take his gear. See, in this event, players don't fully die right away. We're still in hardcore, but you have about three minutes to be revived before the afterlife takes you away. Once the player was back up, we stripped him of all of his gear and took him prisoner. Uh, uh, hey, Nikki, just gonna let you know, uh, you're our prisoner. What is always happening to me, I swear? I think he took it well. Now onto the reason we took him prisoner. Protag negotiated a deal over the radio with his team. 10 diamonds for Nikki. Probably the worst deal ever for them. He just seems like trouble to me. We agree on the spot and wait for them to show up. Two players arrive in the distance and my heart starts to beat. We do some irrelevant small talk, but that just leads to the other team stalling. I doubted that they would have 10 diamonds on them anyway, since they are already so rare, but it was worse than that. In the midst of exchange, players began to wrap our position. At this time, Protag made the major call to kill the prisoner and run. What? What did he just do without warning? Hello? I guess we run. Too bad the other team had guns and I was the target left over. Well, I tried to fend off our attackers with a pistol. My entire team turned and made a break for the hill, like the heroes they so claim to be. Uh, this could be going better. That's right, <laughs> I died. I was on the ground KO'd, taken out of the running. My body was just sitting there like rotten meat. My team, however, perfectly fine. I'm not angry, you are. However, my story doesn't end here. The other team actually revived me before Nikki revenge killed me again. You know what? I deserve that one. But they did revive me after all. I was now in the same situation I just put Nikki in some odd minutes ago. Prisoner. I am now under the supervision of our new arch enemy. I was fuming at this point, but I had to play good cop. I just walked along making sure my life was never actually in jeopardy. We arrived at a small suburban town, later to be known as the RSSU where we would hang out for a bit. This isn't even the team's base. We just took over someone else's base while I was prisoner, apparently. I'm more confused than you are, trust me. While here, that giant group of people who killed me split off into two separate teams, a scout slash base building team and a mining team. I volunteered to be on the mining team. What, I was bored. No, I'm not actually taming with them. This is my master plan. I went to the caves with this group of people, totally planning on turning one of them to my side and letting me escape. While in the caves, I split off with one survivor, my most likely candidate to turn for my team. We went through the caves trying to find diamonds with no luck at all. Or that's what I'd want you to think. I was actually getting plenty of diamonds along the way, just doing it so that one survivor had no idea what I was grabbing. We kept on mining until survivor just DC'd. I think that means I've escaped. That was easy. I kept on mining though, as I wasn't done collecting diamonds. After about 14 or so in total, I had had enough. Plus, I didn't want his team catching up to me, so I surfaced as a free man. With my freedom intact, I made my way back home to greet my team with open arms. However, when I arrived, everything was gone. My team had relocated after not negotiating to get me back. I should have reevaluated who my friends were before this happened, actually. But at that exact moment, Ryan got on. 
in the base. It seems he logged off here yesterday and was also abandoned. Since we had no leads, I suggested we go over to Gumrock at the top of the prison and see if he noticed where they went. Unfortunately, when we got there, we weren't given any good news. Wild Goose Chase to find our friends was still on. Ryan and I wandered the land looking for any sign of our team. We stuck to the border just so we wouldn't see anyone lurking about, but just as we had lost all hope, a hill seemed awfully man-made for my liking. I mined inside, and sure enough, it was a base. Protag came rushing out to greet us as we had made our way home. I can't believe I found this place because they sucked at making Minecraft terrain. But we're back with the boys. Okay, hold on, hold on. What the heck? Welcome. It. Weren't you a prisoner? Uh, I yeah, I kind of just egg. like left. They all died to a zombie, and I walked away. Oh. <laughs> yeah. After such adventure, it was time to put down roots in a permanent base. Protag wanted us to renovate a downtown building as our home. Before I left for the job, I made a diamond strengthened crossbow. I wouldn't really point this out and tell you the rash use of my diamonds, but I did research before the event. Apparently, this crossbow can one-shot full irons with a headshot and still do damage to diamond armor. It is going to be a major player in this event moving forward, so that's why I'm heavily mentioning it now. After that, I made a diamond chest plate as well, just to keep on me. But I didn't want to wear it, because if I did and then died with it on, they might just res me to take it from me. With all of us geared up and ready to go, we headed to the downtown to check out a nice base of operations. We settled on a gray building, which happened to be the second tallest, meaning so much renovating. I would show you, but let's be honest, who wants to watch me break thousands of vines? Because that's what my job was, to clear the vines on the outside so no one could come up the base through the roof. After an hour of wanting to do anything but this, an airdrop was announced. The last airdrop had eight diamonds in it, so I think it was clearly worth going and getting. But as we arrived, we saw the team that kidnapped me the day before, Dashing, Zateo, and Anthony. Now, we don't really have beef, but since they got the supplies, I was worried about the gear they would have from it. While at this drop, 100 other people showed up to get this non-existent loot too, but it opened up a meeting opportunity. Three factions all met to discuss the threat on the server. We all allied in order to take them down on site. So the next time we see Dashing and his team, we're gonna take them down. Uh, or, or not. Dashing was kind of waiting outside our base as we arrived. Uh, remember that kill on site contract we just agreed to four seconds ago? Well, not when his whole team's at our door, right? Like, we can't do that. They only wanted gold boots for some reason, so we just kind of gave it to them and sent them on their merry way. In the morning, I noticed a name floating outside our door. Hello. Oh, hey, Survivor. My spy had come back to join the team. Apparently, when mining together, I convinced this man to join the winning side. Even though we are still terrified of dashing, I'm proclaiming us the winning team. Immediately, as Survivor joined the team, a random gentleman just happened to walk by. Who's this guy? Survivor's first move was to cobweb the man up and keep him in the conversation. Yeah, only sweats think like that. Good thing we have him on our team. Speaking of having him on our team, we all met in our newly renovated tower to discuss the plan for the rest of the day. Protag wanted to scout other downtown buildings for possible bases, and now that we have Survivor, I'm way more comfortable taking on teams with other PvPers in them. We, as a team, ventured over to the old brick building that we went to on day one, but as we suspected, that no one was home. I mean, we just looted the place less than 24 hours ago. Of course, no one's gonna be here. It was kind of a letdown, but only for a second because World War II was about to begin. We all met up on the ground as Protag mentioned that Dashing was alone. Dashing is alone. We can gank him on the street. Whoa, that took a turn. Apparently, we're gonna take on Dashing, which means upsetting his team. This can't go bad. Survivor, you're gonna help us gank Dashing. Let's go. This was it. The first big fight amongst prisoners. A gang war, if you will. It started off with a flash. Literally like, I, I'm blind. Thankfully, I was equipped with that crossbow, which hits super hard. This is so gonna end badly. Do not go down that corridor. That's a suicide. No, it's not. Get him, boys. I got, got him. him! I got him! I got him! That's nice shot, Let's man. Go. With Dashing dead, his entire team could roll up at any moment to save him. We have to make sure he stays dead for three minutes at night in the middle of an apocalypse. Easy, right? Oh, here, they're here, they're here. While we were all getting rushed, I repositioned to the top of a tree. Zateo was the first on the scene, trying to revive Dashing. 
and he had no idea that Survivor had switched sides, which worked in my advantage, as I was able to kill him as well. That's two of the big three down. Not that there wasn't more happening. While I was dealing with the boss fight, Protag was taken down by one of the henchmen. He was teamed up on and killed in the very same parking garage I found him in. I tried to go to his aid and revive him, but there were just way too many zombies surrounding me. I ran to get Survivor's help, but in my haste, I became complacent. I died. The second time I have suffered this fate, but this time to zombies, and it's much worse. We're in the middle of fighting World War II, and I forgot all about World War Z. This is it. My story is over. Time to move on to the next thing, I guess. Oh, hey, Survivor's reviving me. All hope is restored. In all seriousness, I was prepared to die, and I wasn't the only one. Protag was gone, Tech Wizard had died, and we'd lost Box. It was a decent trade, but one that shouldn't have happened. Thankfully, after I had risen from the ground, everything was back to being peaceful. Sure, a couple people lurked about, but there was nothing they could do. Everyone had suffered great loss. While Survivor and I floated about collecting gear, more and more people began to show up. And by more, I mean like 15 more who all came in at the same time to make sure everything had resolved itself. We were meeting with scattered teammates, people from the Gurgle Squad, the RSSU showed up, and even some of Gumrock's teammates from Team Lasagna. Like it was an alliance bombardment. I'm so lucky none of them wanted us dead for what we just did. In the meeting, I discovered Abdul was fine and alive, and hadn't even realized we were fighting. Then Box just showed up out of nowhere alive? I don't even know what's happening anymore. I could have sworn he was dead. But that's when I was able to meet with Dreadmask, one of my greatest allies. He was at the RSSU farm that I was taken to as a prisoner. He had been taken for all of his riches by dashing numerous of times, like twice or three times already, all of his diamonds have been stolen. So we had a common enemy, which made us negotiate an unbreakable pact. To celebrate, we went to look at the enemy's bodies, and for some reason, we even blew up Dashing's corpse. What a way to celebrate. Wait, full diamond, full diamond, full diamond, full diamond! Oh, just like that, PTSD struck and we were right back at war. Anthony had shown up with a rocket launcher, declaring revenge. I'm like... Oh, I didn't mean to kill that guy! Kill back him. up, Dread. I got him, I got him! Good got job, Walker! I got him! That's right. I just cleaned up the big three in World War II, and I single-handedly killed them with this crossbow and an innocent bystander back there, but that's not important right now. What mattered was I just took out the three people threatening the entire server. I think I just waived all conflict or all future conflict with what I just did there. And not to mention the amazingly rare diamond arm, full diamond armor, which was crazy to have on the second day of the event. I ended up stealing everything but the chest plate, but I did end up giving Dreadmask the helmet as a sign of good faith for battles to be waged later on. Myself, Fox, Survivor, and Abdul returned home as a new team. A lesser team. I wish we could have all survived World War II, but we just have to keep moving on. I logged on the next day at Gumrock's place. All of Team Lasagna was teabagging a kid on a tree. Apparently, he was an assassin who tried to kill Gumrock as soon as everyone logged on. So brutal bullying is semi-deserved. I stayed with Team Lasagna for some time as my team wasn't on yet. They hosted a meeting for some reason. I listened in to see if I could get any important information. While chillaxing with the gang, my team logged on and died. That's my teammate who just died. Uh, good meeting. I gotta go. So I ran out of there as fast as I could to try and save Bob. I thought there would be a peace wave after ending the war yesterday, but I was wrong. On my way to the downtown base, Abdul was cut down by Adam too. That's two of my three surviving teammates dead, and we just started the day. I made it to our base and scouted the area. It looked as though an explosion was used to blow right in the front door. However, no one was home. I couldn't find any of my teammates at base, so I had no idea where they died. To keep my team from losing more members, I hid at said base, specifically inside the car, so I could watch from a sneak attack position in case I was next on the list. Soon enough, someone did show up, but it wasn't who I was expecting. A so-called random showed up to loot our destroyed base. Yep, that's right, my former leader showed up at base alive. Turns out he hopped on an alt and started from scratch, so he doesn't have as good of gear anymore, but at least he's alive, and he's a friendly face. Since Adam could show up here at any time, we took the truck and started looking for a new base location. While out, we stopped at an island base. We parked the car on the grass to scout it out, but as soon as we got closer, two players rendered in. 
We spotted Khan and Adam, our enemies right there. I'm sure I could probably take them on, but Protag was here and I think I'd be putting him in harm's way. So we hopped back in the car and went to secure any further loot from our past base. As we arrived at the tower, Fox was alive and ready to leave. I wasn't gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, so we booked it out of there, a small but capable team. We took the car all the way over to Gumrock to fill him in on what we had learned. Khan and Adam are the new enemies of peace. We also shared their base location and asked that if anyone spots them in conflict, you give us a heads up so that we can be there to stop them. Now the entire rest of the day and part of the entire event is meant for gearing up. I was the only person in diamond armor on the team, so we had to start focusing on the rest of the event. After 8 days, a single team is meant to be rescued, so killing the others is a necessary evil. We stayed in the caves for some time, gathering as many diamond one veins as possible, until we got word from Tankster VR a possible teammate to meet him in the city. We went up with very much success. Once we found Tankster, we took him in while we kept gearing up on a larger scale. After our enchantment table was stolen, we had to find a new one. The closest table was at the RSSU, still a weird name for a peaceful suburb. However, since it was peaceful, we got in easily. Myself, Box, Protag, and Tankster all started enchanting our gear and books. I even got Tankster to combine my sword with a sharp three book, together giving me a sharpness four diamond sword. That's kind of a crazy item when 90% of the players are still in iron armor. Then Dreadmass showed up, the RSSU's leader, or at least I think he was the leader. Honestly, he's the only person to talk to there. And the reason for that is he's the only person I trust to help me take out Adam and Khan. I talked with him to make sure that he was on board with my plan. Us two versus those two. I'm sure it will end up with more players, but I'm focused on the main fight. He agreed and we'll stand together against them in the coming days. With that arrangement set, day three had ended. The next day, we were back in the mines. We had gotten our level 30 enchant table back and picked up Ryan along the way. This man logged on and hid in the caves under our base till his babysitter came to pick him up. Once I got Ryan out of the caves, we went right back in them, picking up more teammates meads, more diamonds to mine. So that's what we did for what felt like hours, but was really only one. That ended when we ran into the world border, or what I thought was my computer not loading Minecraft. Uh, the edge. My, my world isn't loading in. Oh, no, no, this no, is that's the border. The, that's the end. Oh, that's I was, end. I thought, I actually thought my world wasn't loading in. Oh, the edge of the world is actually a perfect place for our team. Every base before had not worked out, but what about one that is nowhere to be found? So we settled our items and began making the best weapons and armor we could. And seeing Box in full diamond even has me shaking in my boots. As we began our runs in new armor, an airdrop was announced. Now, at this point, we don't actually need the loot. We need to take care of some players in the event, though. If Adam and Khan showed up, we might actually be able to stand a chance. The airdrop was at a supermarket, completely overrun by zombies. But the issue wasn't them. It was the players running around. Without name tags, I have no idea who is who, and I was out for blood. On the roof, I was able to see someone trying to claim the airdrop, and I made sure that did not happen. Dusty fell to me, and I honestly don't even know who that is. So I kind of feel bad about killing him. I would have tried to res the guy, but that's when the event took a turn. I never thought the crowds of zombies would be an issue until they turned mutant, which is why nobody there was able to res him. Unfortunately, we couldn't even get the loot from the airdrop because after Protag launched his one-man missile war, everything inside exploded and no one got a thing. Thanks, fearless leader. As the morning settled in, an assassin struck. Someone began shooting us from atop one of the buildings, but as I got there to look for him, he seemingly disappeared. When he popped up in a window across the way, I opened fire, but no matter how many shots I pumped into this guy, he wouldn't die. While I was taking on the Hulk, my team was facing off against Adam and Khan. Ryan ended up falling off a building to Adam's bow, which gave them the ability to advance. They came down the street, but forgot that I still exist. I lit up Khan with multiple crossbow shots, prompting him to run home. So I would call this a draw. No one really died and no one got a single piece of loot. Day five, we were all feeling up in the world. Somehow we aren't dead yet, so confidence was bursting through our veins. I'm brushing our egos up because we wanted to go challenge Khan and Adam, or at least scout their base. On the way, someone rendered into our sights. Not knowing whose side this guy was on, I planned to take him out by force. Fox and Protag posted up plain as day, but he didn't see me, so I snuck around to his backside and I swear I couldn't have gotten a better opening line. Uh, you know I see you, right? Well, do you see me? Oh, sh ah. I felt like Batman after such an entrance. 
but the man I killed, Inferno Cookie, was not part of Khan's team. He was just the unlucky son of a gun who logged off outside his base. After reviving him, we sent him on his way as Adam was looking directly towards us, which is what we did. No way are we gonna try and take on the giant base right now. On our exit, we ran right into Gumrock, who was apparently looking for us. They wanted us to know that Adam and Khan have Tankster VR and want 10 diamonds in trade for him. First off, we don't have that many. And second off, the last trade we did with their team ended in my death. So pretty bad idea. In the middle of that conversation, two players on horseback showed up. Bill and Kavo. I went to see what they wanted, but Gumrock just ran away as not 24 hours ago, Gumrock lost his entire team to these two players. No idea how, but I guess these two are just bad guys now. Fair play since we kind of just kept making out random people as our enemy. We adopted Gumrock onto our team and took him over to the RSSU to make a plan with Dread. It was finally time for us to take on Khan and Adam's giant base and we needed an army. While waiting around for the RSSU's fearless leader, myself, Box, and Protag played a human hangman with our own bodies. Once our boredom subsided and he showed up, we had a big group getting ready for this fight. And by big, I mean more than at least three people. We all gathered around Protag and listened to his speech, firing us up for a great war. Hear ye, hear ye. Adam's here and Khan Lud have been terrorizing this server for way too long. This group of brave people some of you well equipped, others of you not so well equipped. Some of us good at PvP, others of us just absolute dog. Right now is our best chance to assault their base. You all saw Welcomin's demonstration of how we TNT the walls to get in. They might be double layer, they might be waterlogged. Whatever it is, we surround them, we get in the base, we don't kill each other. There's only two or three of them in there. There's Conlad, Adam, and Cybernetic Steve. We need to have all distinguishing armor so that we understand who is on what team. I believe. Gold we should boots. everyone get a banner. Everyone get like a banner. Ooh, yes. Boots. A banner? Team banner. Everybody, we, we regather at this entrance right here on sunrise tomorrow. Why is it's gonna yes. you realize yes. sunrise tomorrow is in uh, Wait, 15 is it morning minutes, right, right now? It's it's, morning. it's yes. noon. Oh, we ride. <laughs> with such a group by our side no one could take us on our numbers were too big and an army far and wide once we got to the base we used my genius plan since you can't break blocks you have to use tnt and the water under their base prevents us from doing that but no one said anything about placing tnt and just not lighting it so we blew into the walls and ransacked the place Apparently, they were still out looking for a nearby airdrop, which gave us the time to demolish everything that they had. The only items they were allowed to have access to nowadays was what was in their inventory. But that's when boredom struck, and for some reason, we went all the way back to the RSSU. Like, just ran back there for some reason. Then as soon as we got there, headed back to Adam and Khan's base for blood. I don't even know why we couldn't just sit still for a little bit longer. So we made our way all the way back to the base, which had been repaired by the way. So we blew in again and to no avail, uh, it was empty. While reconquering the base, someone told us that Bill and Kavo were running by. You know, the horseback riders that killed Gumrock's whole team, and Lasagna, the tweaking cat from earlier. Once we heard the news, we rushed to their position. I caught up to them first and distracted them with a conversation. Do you guys know where Khan and Adam are? We have no clue. You've no, you uh, haven't seen no. them? This gave my team catch up time to where I started slaughtering them. Protag was able to take out Kavo and then Box claimed victory over Bill. Once Gumrock was around, they had their final chat before Bill's backstab of an execution. While not really paying attention, I accidentally clicked on the body and had to process the fact that I saw four netherite scraps, enough for one ingot. Only one other person on the server has netherite and that's Adam. So I snatched it up real quick and hit it from the others for the time being. I don't want anyone trying to get them from me. Plus, without gold on the server, it's going to be hard enough making this a whole ingot. A task for day six, I presume. Once we all got on the next day, I told my team the goal. Grind as many zombies as possible. The reason for that is because they all have a chance to spawn with golden armor. If they drop it, we can smelt it down for a single gold nugget. After getting 36 of those, I'll have our netherite ingot in no time. We first started by grinding them in the city. 
Everyone would get into the most sketchy of situations and just crit out zombie after zombie until rewarded with the illustrious gold. After slow progress, we figured why not check out the RSS used chest for any golden armor. A group of pacifists surely hoard, right? I found plenty of armor amongst the mess and after smelting it all down, I totaled 14 nuggets. Still not even half of what I need. So as you can assume, we spent another night downtown just destroying our gear to end out our time with only 24 nuggets. Still not enough, we need 12 more. While running around, we stumbled onto a few people bickering. Being the kind people that we are, we settled the matter by critting out anyone we could and holding them at bow point for golden armor. Thankfully, they had some, giving us another three golden pieces. As we were splitting up the arguing foe, an airdrop came in. Of course, we wanted that loot. And luckily for us, it was close to every player on the freaking server. So the odds of getting it are slim to none. I ran over the hill and saw a bajillion zombies already there. And I knew this was going to be tough. I just ran through as many as I could. Climbed up with some cobblestone and there it was. A singular gold ingot. Nine more nuggets. And enough to make the netherite chest plate. I healed up my current chest plate with some leftover diamonds, shouted amongst the crowd, and equipped my triumphant netherite chest plate. I now possess the same gear that makes Adam scary, and have evened the odds. After such an amazing couple of days and nights grinding, we relaxed for a little bit and took Gumrock over to our base, finally accepting him as one of the YouTube boys. It's still just a small hole on the side of a massive cliff to the void, but that's fine, right? To end out the day, another airdrop was announced do we need to do it no do we yeah as we arrived on site it was the worst scene ever people were fighting elder guardians trident diamond zombies were walking around and worst of all the chests were under the earth so as soon as you tried to go you'd get mining fatigue and you can't even claim it we all began fighting different things trying to take out as many mobs as possible however it turns out this was useless as someone was already digging a tunnel to the loot without anyone knowing. Oh, and me whacking this diamond zombie? Uh, apparently, they're immortal. So yeah, this thing would never die. Who the heck makes immortal diamond zombies for fun with Elder Guardians? What a pairing. After spending so much time getting absolutely nothing, we had no idea the next day would be sending us into a second World War II. Or wait, would that be World War IV? Anyway. It's about to be one of the most important days on the server. We started off the day pretty normally by just grinding some more zombies. It was really just to get some levels for our gear. Survivor was back online and had to get some diamond armor up to snuff like my full Pro 3 gear. Afterwards, an airdrop spawned and we all headed over to it. We came up on a suburb, really close to the drop. That's when we saw them. Khan and Adam fighting for this drop. As soon as I saw Khan, I knew we had to take him out today. This started the chase. As I was running after him, Box helped a ton. He used the grappling hook to give himself some speed while I was pelting them with bolts. He caught up and stalled Khan long enough for me to continue catching up. I even tried out the strap for myself and got into the fight. Got him, I got him. Nice. We hold him, we hold him, we hold him. Let's go, we did it. We had taken out Khan. Now, all we had to do was guard his body from Adam, but that wasn't an issue as there's no way Adam rushes us with this many people on our side. We were all high and mighty after taking out another famed villain on the server. That's when we got careless. The fiends at the airfield opened fire on us. I never thought that they would do that, but as soon as I saw Adam, my eyes turned red and the battle began. With such a large group by my side, Adam and his friends fled into the forest. But after trying to cut them off for a flank, I couldn't find anyone. So I returned to a huge forest fire that had broken out and led me right to him. Brian was dead in the woods, surrounded by zombies and lava, which is a terrible sign. I kept popping shots at Adam, but it wasn't getting anywhere. Then Box dropped to Naomaze. That's two of my teammates dead. I tried to get over to Box to res him, but the nighttime had spawned way too many zombies to handle. He died right in front of my eyes, and that's when Adam jumped me. I got a few hits in, but without my shield, I didn't want to take him on. In my haste to run away and equip my shield, Alatar died to him instead of me. This entire battle just lost me my team, and there was nothing I could do about it. I met up with Gumrock, my only surviving teammate, and ran from the scene. In total, we had lost Ryan, 
Box, Alatar, Dreadmask, and Protag. Not only was that his second death, that is the entire YouTuber team gone. All of the OGs are dead but me. It was hopeless. The battle of, uh, Jimmy Changa was lost. So we ran back to the RSSU to hopefully find anybody still alive. A friend would be good to see right about now. And turns out we ran right into Cookie Guy, the one from earlier, you know, that I snuck up on and killed in cold blood. I recruited him instantly. He had zero choice in the matter, and I need allies to win this thing. Of course, Survivor had to skip the end of day seven, and we lost everybody in the process. He throws my events, I swear. I took Cookie and Gum to our world's edge base and just tried to relax for the rest of the day. No way were we going outside with the threat of Adam and Nalmaze walking around. You are looking at the wrong man for the job, okay? My goal is to leave District 14 in a helicopter, preferably not with Adam. So if cowering on the border is what I have to do, I'm gonna do it. Day eight, the final day on the server and the day I escape. Myself, Gumrock, Cookie, and now Survivor are the last remaining members of the YouTube team. Dismembered as we are, the battle of, uh, Oh shoot, what I- oh, uh, Chimichanga, right. The Battle of Chimichanga yielded great loot. I had gotten numerous sets of diamond armor from my fallen friends, while Cookie and Gum had salvaged Khan's body, getting us enough for another netherite piece. So I made Survivor his own netherite prop for a chestplate, as well as I had grabbed Box's last wish, a mutant zombie spawn egg I'm supposed to use in battle, which I totally don't mess up by the way. With us all geared up, it was time for the final event. We had been told to head downtown. The helicopter will be landing on one of the numerous buildings which needs secured from the zombies. We went back to our original tower, the one blown up by Adam, securing the top in case our building was chosen for landing. Of course, right across the way was Adam and his team. It's not a great idea to fight right now. We have no knowledge of who's left in the event or or how many people can survive District 14. As the time went on, more and more people started showing up, all climbing to our tower to join us. Our alliance never failed, so everyone was on our side. The border pushed us to a nearby building. The giant alliance formed on the roof while Adam's team was forced below, unless he truly wanted to fight us up here. Survivor landed a shot on Cybernetic Steve, taking him out of the battle, the first of Adam's team to fall. However, the relentless zombies were slowly becoming a problem. Just then, a cry came from under the roof. One of our allies was dying. I broke under to discover Nalmaze, the mini boss. Mid flight, he whipped out a rocket launcher, but it wasn't even close enough to stop me. Back on the roof, a mutant zombie had spawned. Most players still rocked iron armor somehow, so I had to be the one to take it out. Thankfully, with the use of my shield, it was no match, and honestly, that now Maze posed a bigger threat. And he was alive at least. Soon enough, we were told only two players can be rescued. So I made sure to grab Survivor and head away from our alliance. If two people are going to make it, it's going to be us versus the army. I made a small bunker on the side of the building while trying to look for Adam. After tunneling around the building for a little while, I finally spotted him hanging off the side of the tower. I decided to play a fun game with him. It's called Deception. In the final moments, he was alone. So I offered a deal. Us three versus all other people. Now, I would have carried this out if it wasn't for a single voice full of anger above us. How Look, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna take out the rooftops. I'm I'm not even capping. I kinda wanna leave it to, to the three of us at the end. Yeah, I'm down. Thanks, welcoming you. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess teaming with Adam is off the table. But that's when it all switched. The border changed to the supermarket. That building is a lot easier to land on, so any survivor had to make it there. One survivor and I relocated there first, as we let Adam take out the rest of our competition for us. That's when Angry Gumrock decided to join us. Apparently I was too convincing earlier, but that didn't matter. This was the team, us three versus Adam. The border forced us all together and the fight began. Bullets, arrows, that spawn egg that I definitely don't mess up at all. Anything to win in a victory. Sorry, Adam. You are alliancing with me. We're not. We're killing you. Gumrock's dead. I got him. I got him. You got him. We had done it. Adam was dead. Survivor had gotten him. We were the last player standing. Survivor and I had conquered District 14. What a journey. The helicopters flew in as if they were from the heavens. 
Not even sure if they know how to fly though, but they did make it down safe and sound. We are still prisoners, so we stripped off our gear and were told to turn around, but we still did it. Even if we were taken in cuffs, it didn't matter. We had won. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more. 2,000 comments on this video and I'll do it again, but with parasites this time, just to make it that much scarier. Until next time, peace out.